What's happening guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle. Today I have another underused match. This one's against Scott and this turned out to be a really good battle. So uh, from looking at the team preview, uh, the first thing I noticed, I see Stack Attacker and I'm like Trick Room perhaps, but then there's not really much else that takes advantage of that. So overall though, he's got a pretty solid looking team. Uh, I am afraid of the Scizor. If that thing starts to Swords Dance, it could be trouble. Then I am afraid of the Superior. Uh, if I don't keep around Scarf Darmanitan, that thing could be uh, pretty damn scary, but Let's go ahead and just jump into the battle and see how it goes. Alright, so I don't want to lead off with Aggron because I'm expecting him to go with Rotom Heat. So I'm just going to toss out Young Damage the Darmanitan and uh, that's going to work out for me because he does end up leading off with the Easy Bake Oven here. And uh, so I'm Choice Scarf, obviously I am going to be faster and I'm expecting maybe he'll think I'm just going to go right for a U-turn. So I decided to actually just go for a Rock Slide instead, trying to catch that thing off guard. But he is just going to switch right into uh, the old Swampert. Tells me to get off his Swamp. And now I'm stuck into Rock Slide, so I do have to get the hell out of here. So that's going to do like no damage. And I know that he's probably going to want to go for Stealth Rock here. And seeing as I have a Magic Bounce Espeon on my team, who also has Grass Knot, this is an easy switch for me. So I decide to bring in the Lime Green Kitty, and he does end up going for Stealth Rock. So that's perfect. I Magic Bounce that right back. And I didn't even have to uh, have to use Aggron to get the Stealth Rock up. So that's pretty perfect. And at this point, I don't really want to over predict. I'm thinking maybe he'll stay in and go for an Earthquake thinking I won't be able to knock him out in one hit. Um, so I'm just going to go right for the grass, not playing it safe, but he is going to predict that and goes right back into the freaking Rotom, who does take a lot of damage from the Stealth Rock, but obviously grass knot's not going to do anything. I really should have just gone for Psychic there. Yeah, it would have done a lot to Swampert if he stayed in, and I could have lived an Earthquake, um, but a Psychic really just would have knocked that Rotom out, and that would have been really nice. But now I've got to switch because I am locked into grass knot, and I'm going to go right into Slime Shady as he goes for a Defog. So... He goes ahead and blows away his own Stealth Rock that I bounced back. Uh, that is fine. I expected an overheat there. Uh, but Gudra does a good job at checking this thing because you really can't touch me. And I don't care about getting burned because I'm a special attacker. So I go right for a Draco Meteor here as he's going to bring in the Scizor. And this is going to do a lot of damage. I think it does about half. Um, but this is kind of a risky switch in because a lot of Gudras do carry Fire Blast. Unfortunately, mine does not. So I can't do much against the Scizor here. But I do do a solid chunk there with that Draco Meteor. And I'm going to switch out because I do need Gudra uh, for later. So I decide to go into Aggron. Honestly, this team doesn't have a whole lot of switches into Scizor. Uh, Aggron's kind of the only thing I've got, and a lot of the time you do see superpower, but I had to go for that anyway, as he's going to end up going for the U-turn, and now he gets some momentum as he's able to bring in whatever he wants, and he goes into uh, the Superior here. So, I'm going to stay in, there's really not much this thing can do, other than just Leaf Storm and get that special attack raise. It's going to take him about three, I think, to knock me out, um, but Heavy Slam does a lot of damage here. So, he decides to go for Leech Seed, that shows me this thing's one of those annoying sub -seeders. And uh, that's just kind of a pain in the ass. Fast grass types are the death of me. But I go for the heavy slam here. It's going to do a solid chunk of damage. And uh, after the leftovers and the leech seed, he's not going to be able to take one more. So he is probably going to want to get out of here as uh, he actually heals himself back up to like almost half. And uh, that's just annoying. So I go for another heavy slam here as he is going to switch out. And he's going to bring back in the Swampert. So um, I'm in here leech seeded and heavy slam is not going to be able to do too much to this thing. So... I don't really want to stay in to take an Earthquake just to get a Toxic off on this thing. So I am going to need to get my big metal ass out of here as uh, this thing's just kind of staring at me in the face, eating some leftovers and then taking my health with the Leech Seed. So that's annoying. And uh, I do decide to go right back into Espeon. I figure there's a chance he might go for the Stealth Rock again, but he does know that I have this Espeon around. So he's probably not going to, but either way, I know that I can live an Earthquake with about 30% health. So he goes for that um, and I actually end up getting critical hitted and that is going to destroy my Espeon who is frail as hell anyway, but a crit is for sure going to do the job. So uh, that does kind of suck because that would have given me a pretty good position there to just hit it really, hit something really hard with a spec psychic. So uh, that's a bummer, but at least the good news is now I'm able to go into whatever I want and I'm going to go into the uh, Karadon here as I go for a Swords Dance. I know that I can take an Earthquake because I am actually max HP, which is kind of a weird Karadon set, but it works out because you really just take advantage of Aqua Jet anyway. You don't really need the speed investment, so... After the Swords Dance, though, a knockoff is going to be able to take care of the Swampert, and that's cool because that thing was a, a pretty annoying defense wall, so it's good to get that out of there. And I'm um, over here getting hurt by some Life Orb. But now he goes into the Superior, and I kind of forgot at this point that he had that much health. Um, I, I kind of figured maybe an Aqua Jet would be able to take him out, but it wasn't quite in range, so I do have to switch out. And I'm going to go into Slime Shady, who's the good switch in because I do have... Um, Sap Sipper, so he went for a Leaf Storm there, it wasn't going to do anything, but he just goes for the Dragon Pulse, which ends up doing pretty much nothing, um, because Assault Vest Gudra is nothing to fuck around with. So, 
I'm gonna go for another Draco Meteor here as he's gonna go into the Scizor. I kind of expected that, but as seeing as I saw how much damage it did the first time, I figured it'd be alright, but he avoids it, and I'm like, damn it. That's uh, that, that's quite annoying, but I can go for another one. I do actually outspeed, and that's kind of unfortunate because this thing would be dead now if I was able to just hit that damn first one, so um, he is gonna be able to go for it. He goes for the Pursuit here, I guess expecting me to switch out, but luckily, since I stay in, I'm able to take that nicely. And one more, uh, Draco Meteor will be able to take this thing out. But he's going to conserve that for maybe some late game bullet punches as uh, he's going to go right back into the Easy Bake Oven. So even with my special attack drop, that is going to do quite a bit of damage and it's looking like one more will be able to take it out. So my special attack is pretty much gone, but he's in red health. So I figure this next one should do the trick as he uses trick. And he's going to go ahead and give me uh, a Choice Scarf as he takes my Assault Vest. And that is actually bad news because now he's wearing my freaking vest and check this out, this next Draco Meteor is actually going to leave this thing on 1 HP. So that is uh, pretty damn annoying there, but I guess it's really not too big of a deal because this Rotom can't hurt me too bad anyway. I just got to go for it once more. Um, so he goes for the Overheat, it's not going to do too much damage here. And I'm actually out of Draco Meteors, I I've used up all of my PP. And check this out, I have to go for Struggle, which is actually, this is like the first time in a Wi-Fi battle. I think I've killed something with Struggle, so that's kind of funny. And uh... I don't quite knock myself out with the recoil, I live it with 2 HP, which is good because now I can see what he wants to go into, and he's going to bring back in the Annoying Snake. So I'm stuck into Struggle, and I don't really have any business staying in there, so I'm going to switch into Optimus Prime yet again as he sets up a substitute. So uh, that kind of sucks, brings out the old Beanbag, and this, like, I think I can win this matchup though, it's really not too bad for me. He's going to need to get um, like two Leaf Storms, but after I break this substitute, I should be able to knock it out with a Heavy Slam. So, he goes for the Leaf Storm there. Uh, it is going to do a decent chunk of damage as uh, he gets that special attack boost because of Contrary. And I'm able to just go ahead and absolutely Body Slam the shit out of this stuffed animal. So, it's actually looking like after that plus two special attack boost, he will be able to knock me out with this next Leaf Storm, which does uh, kind of suck. But he's over there eating some leftovers, ready to just go ahead and click Leaf Storm on me. And uh, as you'll see here, he actually ends up missing it. So Optimus somehow got out of the way. I don't know how this dude did it, but he, he, he dodged it somehow. So uh, a Heavy Slam is going to knock it out, and that was an unfortunate miss. Uh, but I did still have Choice Scarf Darmanitan, so I could have just brought in the Darm uh, to be able to outspeed that Superior after. But uh, not too big of a deal, as now he's going to bring in the Scizor. He does have Super Power, and that is going to knock me out. So, now I can bring in whatever I want, and I do still have my Offensive Starmie, who's just been chilling in the back of the team. So I decided to bring out my boy Rick, stretch out the, uh, the, the limbs or whatever Starfish have. Um, I go for Thunderbolt, and uh, that is going to knock that thing out. So now all he has left is the Altaria and the Stack Attacker, and it's looking like Starmie has uh, some pretty great matchups against both. So, here he's going to bring in the Q-Tip Dragon, as uh, I know that an Ice Beam isn't going to quite be able to knock it out, but then again, Altaria isn't going to be able to one-hit KO Starmie either, and uh, I'm obviously faster. Even if he went for a Dragon Dance here, I'd still be okay, so... He busts out the big ass afro as I just go right for the ice beam and unfortunately he actually ends up getting frozen which is not something that I see very often and I was like damn it that just not that it really mattered because he wouldn't have been able to take me out with any attacks um, but that does just kind of turn him right into a popsicle and now I can just ice beam it freely and that is going to knock that thing out so sorry about that Altaria the hax is pretty pretty strong in this battle but you know it's, it's kind of the game we play so all he's got left at this point is the Stack Attacker, so he comes in looking like a cluster of Legos. Honestly, what a weird Pokemon, but I go for the Hydro Pump, um, and that is going to be able to knock that thing out. So, down goes the Stack Attacker, and that is the end of the match there. So, I thought that was a pretty fun one. Uh, UU is always some pretty swell times, so thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button on this video if you enjoyed, and subscribe for some more Wi-Fi battles. Also, uh, thank you guys for all the support lately. Uh, you guys are pretty much the best. Peace out.